We're going to be looking at the new man this morning, and I am so excited about sharing with you about this, in, in part because it's just really kind of cool how the Lord put all this together. Here we're talking in Exodus about, you know, the Israelites and their, you know, their back and forth nature. And then we have Adam who was teaching about the man and the nature of man. What is man? Oh, it was really great. Adam had so many great points. It was just really awesome. It was a really great message. And then as we were talking and Jeff was, uh, you know, looking for some, some people to teach, Adam and I kind of got together and we talked. And I'm like, I'm like well, I was going to talk on the new man. And he's like, well, that's funny because I was going to talk on the, the nature of man. And it just fits together so well. And I just really think that is awesome. And you know what? The bottom line to that is, the bottom, he, God must really love you guys. <laughs> you know what I mean? He must really love you guys because he gives what we need as a body and he puts it together. I love that. So um, be encouraged by that. Um, I'm excited to share with you. Let's um, open up in a word of prayer. Lord, we're just really thankful for um, the new life that you have given. We just took communion together. You promised the new covenant, the cup of the new covenant, the blood that was shed. And here we are, we are new. And we're made new in newness, renewed to what you desired, what your intent was. And so, Lord, we are in the beginning of understanding that. All of us are in the beginning of really understanding that. Lord, we want to press into more and more of what you can do, the newness that you have given to us. So just pray your Holy Spirit just to lead and to move in our hearts today because you know you know what we need. You know what every single one of us needs. You know where we're at. You know uh, the situation. You know exactly the nutrients that we need to be able to be fruitful in the place that you have planted us. And so, Lord, we just bless you this morning. We pray that you would be glorified, that we would have a fresh look at what you've done. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we're going to be in Colossians chapter 3 um, and uh, uh, verse 10 through 17. You can turn in your Bibles if you'd like to there. But before we get started, I love new things. I don't know about you guys, all kinds of new things. So I, 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 I'm doing something new this year. I made this hydroponic tower. Um, and I've done gardens. I've liked to do gardens, but I haven't had the time to really get the soil amended, all of those things. And I was looking online and I saw this and I was like, wow, that would be so cool. So there's some tutorials on how to make these. So I went ahead and did it. Down in the bottom, there's a bucket that has water in it and a pump and you put nutrients in it. And look at, man, I've got cucumbers growing. I've got squash growing. I've got already, man, they're already starting to, I, I mean, it's just, it's amazing. I can't believe it. I hope that they actually are fruitful. You know, I got green. Okay. So that's cool. And that's what I love about this time of year, right? You start to see this. I mean, things are growing. They're just starting. Um, I was I was sitting outside yesterday and just hearing the birds chirp. You know, the robins out there, they're just going nuts. You know, that newness of life. You know, there's something in us, right? We know there's more. The world is the same way. They know there's more. And they express it in a really weird way. You know, they, they express it in real weird ways. One of the sites that I was looking at, they were, it was about this far extreme of evolution where they're getting tattooed, they're putting all this stuff in them, you know, like spikes and blah, 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 all of these things. And the idea behind it, as I was reading this, I'm like, this is crazy. They think that they're going to somehow, you know, um, evolve, you know, bring us to that place where we jump in evolution. I, there's that thought out there. The funny thing about it is, and I guess maybe the good thing or the real thing, what it shows us is we all are not content with what we are in right now. I don't know about you guys, but I know the Bible promises a lot. And if I'm just content with where I'm at, I don't grow, I don't step out, I don't walk in faith. But that's all part of the newness that God wants us to walk in and live in. And so, you know, I think that that part of us that really wants the newness and we want to see that in things, I mean, look at the shows that are on TV. How many TV shows have you watched or, you know, on, on streaming services? How much have you watched where they're repurposing stuff? I mean, you sit there and you watch this, the antique road show, the, all these old things that people are dragging up, the guys that go out and find stuff in the barnyards and all over America, you know? I mean, and then they repurpose this stuff. I mean, there's something about us. We want to see that. 
Um, you know, how about those stories that we hear of people that, uh, you know, that, that hometown or that just that somebody's nothing and they go to something? You know, those kinds of stories that regenerate that newness that happens. We are enamored with it, no, no matter where it is in our society. But you know what? We as Christians... We are because the Lord has a purpose and a plan. There is a new life that God has for us, and we've experienced it. And to some degree, I pray and I hope that everybody in here has experienced in some way the new life that God gives. If you haven't, if you don't know the Lord today and you haven't experienced the new creation that God can make you, wow, you need to do that. You need to do that. You need to do that this morning. And I hope that when you see what God wants to do here and what His heart is, that it maybe would push you in that direction. Because God's heart is for us to be revived, renewed in Him. Let's look at our text here this morning. Um, Adam talked about um, verse 9 in Colossians, in a way. (laughs) Um, In uh, Colossians 3, 9, it says there, Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds. Um, Adam spent a lot of time talking about what is man just in general, but the fallen nature of man, right? That we're fallen. We've fallen from what God actually intended and what he created man to be. But we enter into verse 10 and it says, and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him, where there is neither Greek nor nor Jew, circumcised, nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another, in psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord, and whatever you do in word or deed, do all. In the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. I mean, this is an amazing passage that talks about a lot of things, but the the central idea there is, this is the new man. This is the new creation. This is what God intended for man to be. And you know what? It's not just, you know, a New Testament idea. You know, there are all kinds of prophecies in the Old Testament that talk about this newness, this new covenant, and they really push your heart and your mind in that direction. But one thing about it is, one thing about it is that, um, that, that and, and we're going to look at that, God's bird's eye view of this is really amazing. So we're going to look at the new man, the image of the new man, and walking in the new man. So to get that bird's eye view of what's going on here, we're going to look at the Old Testament just to see God's heart in this. Ezekiel chapter 11, verses 19 through 20 says, Then I will give them one heart and will put a new spirit within them and take the stony heart of their flesh and give them a heart of flesh that they may walk in my statutes and keep my judgments and do them and they shall be my people and I will be their God. Now, this is a really interesting passage because what is this dealing with? We can't just take this and rip it out of context and say, this is my life. You know, I mean, we can, but we we can't talk about, I mean, we need to talk about what this actually comes out of and what God's heart was. This was given to the nation of Israel. This promise was given to the Jewish people. That's what this that's what this all starts with. You know, we've been in Exodus, right? And 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 um and Jeff has been sharing with us and teaching through that and and it's so much of the old covenant and this covenant that he established with the nation of Israel. With the nation of Israel. I mean, the Jews weren't anything special. They weren't anything special and Deuteronomy makes that very very clear. They weren't they weren't any they weren't actually even a people. God took Abraham from the pagan religions of Ur. 
took him out, spoke to him, and he responded. That's all. He just responded. And then God continues to give promises and to make a nation out of him, out of his family, out of his people. I mean, it's an amazing picture of what God has done. But take that a little bit farther. Why? Why would God do that? It wasn't because they were so special, they were so soft, and they just wanted God to do these things in their life. You know, no, we see that that's not true. I mean, what we talked about last time with Jeff is a really great example of that, right? I mean, we talked about them worshiping a calf, saying that the calf actually was what brought them out of Egypt. I mean, what a low place. Because before that, right? 40 days before that, around that time, I mean, Moses was going to go up on the mountain and, and they say, no, we're not going up there. No way. You go up there, Moses. And so Moses goes up there. He comes back. He talks to them about that. And they say, oh yes, all that the Lord says we're going to do, we'll do it all. And yet 40 days later, they completely flip on that. Totally flip. Oh, that Moses, see, <laughs> you shouldn't have gone up there, Moses. <laughs> you know, they thought he was toast. And so here they are, you know, trying to figure out what are we going to do? We're in the middle of the desert, you know, all of that. And then the, the, the calf, Aaron, Aaron, you know, makes a calf and they start to worship that. And so we see that heart. It wasn't, they weren't anything special. They weren't anything. They, but why did he choose them? Why? It's completely based on relationship. Oh, he chose them to funnel his love, his fellowship through these people to bring the Messiah who would open up relationship for all the world. It is amazing. They are a sign to the world that God is working, that God is real, that God is true, that what he says he will do. They are a global, they are a global picture of God's faithfulness and His goodness. So right now, what do we see? We see it all breaking out, all kinds of stuff breaking out around us. Even in our country, this whole uprising. It's spiritual what's going on. And it centers around His people. And, and, and more importantly, yeah, they are His people for sure. He's going to do everything. He's going to do what He said here in Ezekiel. And... Um, Another scripture just that goes right along with that is Ezekiel 36, 26 and 27. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. That was spoken to the nation of Israel, that he was going to restore them into the new covenant that we have been grafted into. See, this is the bird's eye view of what we're talking about today. This is God's desire. This is God's heart. He's going to renew all mankind and he does it through the nation of Israel. So what we see today, we see this going on. We see, we see uprising. We see all the tension. We see the world turning its back against Israel. But you know what the sad part about all of this is? I mean, you can talk about it in human terms for sure. But in reality, who are they fighting against? Who are they fighting against? It's not a nation. They are fighting against God himself. There have been all kinds of nations that have tried to do that and they're, they're, they're no more. It is amazing. So when we look at the new man... There's a whole big picture of what the new man really is. And the nation of Israel fits into it just a beautiful way. Look at this. Look at what this says. Romans 8, 19 through 22. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. What's the goal? What's God's heart? God's heart is to reveal the new man. The sons of God. That's what his heart is. That's what he did. That's why he sent Jesus is to open up that way, the new covenant. To bring about the new man. To bring about the children of God. The sons of God. 
The whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs. That's what we see today. That's what's going on in our political climate. It's birth pangs. When you look at the unrest, when you look at the things that are going on, it's birth pangs of the birth of the new man. Totally is. In light of um, God's big plan, but the nation of Israel, because what he says he's going to do, he's going to bring them into the land. They are going to be renewed in spirit and in the new covenant which is really awesome to think about. You can, you can think about and ponder that for a long time. It's a beautiful plan that God has. But this is the amazing thing. If we cut out Israel like people want to do, they want to cut people out, they, or they want to cut the nation out, they want to say, well, God's done with the nation of Israel. It's baloney. And the thing that they do, they are impugning God's nature and ultimately they are impugning God's word that he can't do or he won't do what he said he was going to do literally in Jeremiah, in Ezekiel. You can go on and on about his promises of the new covenant. They were directed in the old covenant to Israel, the nation. So in that, there's an impugning of God's word. You know what? And, and, and so this comes down into our lives personally, okay? Okay. That's why this is really important. Because if God will do it literally, right? Like he came as a baby, like, they, like he said he would, right? Out of a virgin birth? Something that we could relate to? He did it literally. In the literal place that the, the Old Testament prophesied. So why would he not do what he has promised about the new covenant and the new? Why would that not be literal? Why would it not be literal? How can you make that jump? No, God is going to be very literal in that. And so if he, if he says that, then we also graft it in. We become part of that. And he's going to do what he has promised through the ministry of his spirit, through the working of the word of God. What he has said and spoken to your heart, he is faithful to do that. Because he's done it on a global scale. He's done it on this. He did it in, the, in, in, in salvation, you know, with Jesus. He's done it all the way along. He's been faithful in all of it. So why wouldn't he be faithful in your life? Why wouldn't he be faithful to do the things that he promises in his word in your life? See, that's why it's so important. Because he's consistent and faithful in all ways and always will be. And that is the hope, that is the joy, that is the blessing of the new relationship with Jesus. And so we could probably just really stop there, but we're not. All right, so um, we're going to go on and we're going to go through this because this is described and the new man, it, it's an exchange, right? It's an exchange. The old nature, Adam talked about that last week and really did an awesome job about talking about the image, the brokenness of that image, how we've been broken by sin and by our own wayward, rebellious ways, and yet God wants to bring newness. Um, oh, I just wanted to share one little fact because uh, about Israel and what's going on with Israel. I mean, we all know that Iran attacked Israel with the biggest air barrage that's ever been, right? I mean, this is still David and Goliath going on. Totally. Look at the population of, uh, I mean, Israel is 10% of the population of Iran. And, and you just throw in the other countries there that are against them, and it just becomes minuscule. The land of Israel, it's 1% of just Iran. 1%. I mean, this is tiny compared to what Iran is, the Persians. I mean, God is still working. This should be really encouraging to us to think about that. God is working. And you know what? The nation, in some corners of the I mean, I read an article that was talking about, yeah, the defense system and the air defense system, it took out like 98% or something like that. I mean, it was a really high number that it took out. That those that air barrage, hard, nothing touched Israel, hardly anything. And not in any con, con, uh, con, of any consequence. So God is working. And they knew it. They saw it. It's a miracle. See, we can just pawn that off as... Oh, yeah, they did great militarily. No, God is working in the midst of that. His hand is in it. I can't believe, you know, I, nah, we, I, we don't have time for that. I mean, you can go, you can read. You should. You should be involved. You should be in touch with what's going on. Because, they're, because once again, their labor pains, their birth pangs, the newness of what God is literally going to do with the nation of Israel as he fulfills every single word that he has said to them. 
So John, um, Jesus talks about the newness. Um, he talks about um, the newness and the new covenant and the new life that we have in a, in, in a way that is really awesome um, that I, I have actually just seen because my little baby niece was just born, right? <laughs> Granddaughter, <laughs> niece, what am I talking about? She whiz. I started thinking about her and I just got lost, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> not real, not really. <laughs> I'm new to this, okay? My first grandchild. Okay, so, um, gosh, I never thought I'd be a grandpa. Did you ever think you were going to be a grandpa? I mean, it's cool, but... Okay, so back to what Jesus said, because that's important. Okay, Jesus answered, and he said, okay, so this was to Nicodemus, right? This was to Nicodemus. He's talking to this guy. He had questions. He saw what was going on in Jesus' ministry. He knew that there was something going on. His heart was, you know, pricked by what Jesus was doing. And so as a religious leader, he comes, and he comes in darkness, you know, uh, trying to figure out what's going on here, who is this Jesus guy? And this is what Jesus says. Jesus says, he answers and he said to him, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He goes on to talk about, you, you're born of water, right? But you've got to be born of the Spirit. That's the newness. That is the bottom line. Jesus defines what is the new life? What is the new man? Well, this is it. Born again. There's a newness that's there. You know, when I was uh, holding Eloise, you know, I'm just touching her little fingers. I'm touching her little toes. I'm thinking about, man, how awesome this is. The newness of life. I mean, it's such a blessing to see that. We see it all over. But think of that in spiritual terms. Think of that in your own life, in your own body. This, the, the, by faith, you're stepping out in new ways that you never maybe would have. I mean, for me, I don't like to be in front of people. It's no fun, you know. You guys are all judging me, right? No, I know you're not. Um, that's what the flesh says. That's what the old man says. You know, I have to push that away. We have to grow in our faith. We have to step out. It's like those new little fingers, that new growth that comes. You know, um, we have to be born again. And that is that, that point where we accept the gospel of Jesus Christ, that he died, that he was buried, that he rose again. When we accept that and believe that, the manifestation is spiritual growth. It's newness of life. It's a new perspective. It's all that we are going to talk about this morning. So that's where it happens. It happens in that repentant heart. This is a way that Paul described it in Ephesians 4, 23 through 24. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. There's this renewing idea of the new man and when let's just get this straight right now when i talk about the new man i'm talking about you know the you know that word there man is really the figurehead of human that that's how that's how paul's using that that's how the bible mostly uses that when it's talking about a group it's talking about all of us it's talking about men it's talking about women it's talking about all of us the new creation the new thing that god does it's for all of us, whether we're men, women, or whatever. I'm not going to refer back to that, but you guys just think of that. That's, it, the, the new man is that figurehead of what God does in humankind with his creation. And then in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. There's that renewing. There's an exchanging of the old for the new that is powered by God. It's powered and given by God. It grows by what God gives. We participate in it. We are there, but he does that work in us. So um, we are filled, and one of the ways that he empowers us is through the filling of the Holy Spirit. That's part of the new nature. That's part of the new man. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you not just um you know not just this outside you know influence that's just out influencing us for no it's inside it's an inside transformation that happens in our lives and it's through the power of the holy spirit who dwells in us, the spirit of truth. So we are renewed by that. We are 
filled with the Spirit. Another verse that talks about that being filled with the Spirit, which I love this in Ephesians, it says in 1, 13 and 14, it says, In Him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth. Okay, so there's this hearing. There's this trusting and believing. You heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. You hear that truth and it begins to change. You begin to believe it. You begin to hear it. And it starts to change who you are. In, all, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. I'm so thankful for that. We are sealed. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. That is the new man. The new man is sealed. And who is, he is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. We're redeemed. We're bought back. We're repurposed. It's awesome. Through the working of the Holy Spirit and through God's plan as he, as he sees us and looks at us and um, as he gifts us and as he grows us and as we respond and step out in faith and as we trust him, as we're going to see here, um, another way that Paul talks about the new man is he talks about it as a new creation. This is one of my favorite verses, really. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, if anyone believes, if anyone comes to him, if anyone is born again, this is what he is. He's a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Awesome. I know you guys have heard these verses, but it brings in that newness. That's what we are. I pray that it will really touch our hearts and that we'll walk in this newness. And one of the things that is beautiful in this passage in, um, in Colossians is that the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. We are renewed in knowledge. And that is such a key point for us to realize that there's a new knowledge that this, this new creation, that this new man has. There has to be a divestment or an exchange of that old knowledge. The things, the habits, the things that we've lived in, the ways that we've talked to people, you know, that has to be pulled away. It has to be taken out of the way so that the newness can rise up in us. And you know, that's the struggle, isn't it? That's the struggle for us. It's hard at times to let go. It's hard at times to really let go of that old nature. But that's what we've got to do. We've got to let go. We've got to let the Lord have His way in the situation, in the circumstance, because we are new in Him. Um, so we have a new knowledge there. And some of, the, some of the ways that this can come to life for us is in 2 Corinthians 4, 6-7. through For it is the, the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. So what is it? It's the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. We have this new knowledge. You know what? I am so I mean, aren't you blessed as you read through? I mean, when you read the Gospels and you read through the life of Jesus, man, it adds so much. You know, I love the doctrinal portions of Scripture. You know, the letters that Paul wrote. And, you know, Romans is an awesome, you know, doctrinal thing, you know, where he talks about our relationship, who we are. There's so much there about salvation and what God's heart is and his plan is, you know. But what about, what about, what about the Gospels? What about what Jesus did? Isn't that awesome as you read through that and you make connections doctrinally to what is said in some of the other, but you read about who Jesus is? There's a new knowledge in our hearts and lives. I am so thankful for the Gospels because God didn't just give us a book. You know, I mean, that's kind of like what the Old Covenant was based on, wasn't it? It was a bunch of laws and commandments and things that they were to do to experience the Lord. That was the point, to bring their hearts together in unity and to experience the Lord through these ceremonies and these rituals and these things that they did. By faith, they would come to these rituals, believing that God had given them to them, that they would have fellowship with God through those things. I mean, the Seder that we just had this year, I mean, it is awesome. It's packed full of all kinds of beautiful connections. 
that that ceremony and those religious things that they did, it connects us to Jesus and to relationship and fellowship. And that's what the Gospels need to do in our lives. Connect us. Connect us to what, <laughs> what God wants to do in our hearts and lives. The new creation in Christ. That we would be connected. So we see in the face of Jesus, we see our knowledge is changed. And as we read the Gospels, as we read the Word of God, as the Spirit of God, you know, John 14, 6, uh, yeah, is it 14, 6? 26. John 14, 6, 26. <laughs> uh, the Spirit will bring Jesus' Word to remembrance. I mean, that's what the Spirit of God does. It brings the words that He spoke to our remembrance. Um, that is one of the workings of the Holy Spirit. So thankful for that. That's a knowledge that was not in the old nature. It's not in the old man. It's a knowledge that is new. And we need to allow that to grow in our hearts and our lives. Because what it does is it ends up bringing glory to God. We become a picture of God's glory. I mean, that is, that is what it's all about. And then, <clears throat> but we have this treasure and that treasure is the knowledge of God the knowledge of Jesus. And it's in this earthen vessel. And it goes on to say that if that earthen vessel is, you know, if it's broken, if it's cracked, if it's bruised, if it's all of that, it's, it's because this knowledge needs to come out. This knowledge that we're talking about, it needs to come out. This renewed knowledge, the new creation, the new um, attitude, the new heart, it needs to come out. And so we see in that that there is a beautiful thing. There's a switching of what our knowledge is about hard things and trials that we go through. They're just not about us. They're about God revealing this, the glory of God in the face of Jesus. It's a treasure. And the world needs it because it brings newness and it brings what they're wanting, what they're, lo what they, what they're longing for, that newness of life. Um, <clears throat> we also see that... Um, uh, that uh, um, I'm lost here. Just a second. <laughs> New grace. Oh yeah, yeah. Here's another knowledge that we have. Um, knowing this, Romans six six. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves in sin. This is a new knowledge that we were crucified with him. That old man has to die. It has to go away. That that old nature. We need to change. We need to let go of that, and we need to walk in the newness. And you know, I. You know, as I was looking at this and I was, uh, I was looking at Romans 8, I was just realizing how, man, those birth pangs, we, in a sense, are going through birth pangs even in our own lives. That, that, that's kind of what, um, what sanctification is in the process of sanctification, right? I mean, we're in this place. The new man is trying to come out, right? And here we are in this place where we're suppressing, we're pushing it down. No, Lord, this is what I want to do. This is what I think. No, that could never happen. I can't believe that that could be uh, true or whatever. Or I can't believe that person could do this. You know, we have all of that struggle. It's like birth pangs for the new nature to be born within us. The struggle is good. And so I... But that's the deal. We have this new knowledge. We need to push that away. Push that old man, knowing that we were that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, and that we should be... Who wants to be a slave? I don't want to be a slave to sin. I don't want to be a slave to anything. I want to be free to do what the Lord has called me to. That's the new nature. Um, we need to just run to that and run into that. The other thing that this passage in um, Colossians talks about is the new image. So, so the, our knowledge is renewed. That's, that's an amazing thing that our knowledge is renewed. And there's that exchange of the old nature, the old habits, the old ways that we've think, seen things and thought about things. There's that newness that comes. But there's also... Um, there's a renewing uh, according to the image of him. And Adam talked about that, the image that we are, that, that we, you know, we are a trinity. There's, there, there's no doubt about that. Um, we're going to look at some verses here that shed light on that. I just love the way that Adam talked about the brokenness of that and also the brokenness of, that God experienced in that when Jesus was on the cross and that he took that brokenness. He took that brokenness on himself. I mean, it is amazing. We celebrate communion in that way. Um, so look at what Genesis, this is the original intent that God had for us. And Adam, you read this last week. 
um, but we're going to read it again. Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. I mean, how clear can you get? We're created in the image of God. I mean, over the repetition in this passage, is, is re, it, 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 it is showing us the importance of who we are. You know, another scripture that really, that, um, really brings that to light, I, and I love it, it's in John where Jesus, I think it's in John, anyway, you'll remember where it's at. I'm just doing this off the top of my head, so this part. Um, he holds up the coin, right? He holds up the coin? I just love that. It's one of my favorite stories about Jesus because it is so, it just beautifully just disarms everybody's theories about him. Just totally disarms them. They don't know what to say. He holds up the coin. He says, whose image is on this? Well, Caesar. Well, give him your money. Who cares about the taxes? Just give him the money. But render to God what is God's. That is it. I mean, I, I don't even know what to say. You know, you come to this place of we are gods. We are the we are not gods in the sense of we are gods, right? Do you have to, don't misinterpret what I'm saying? We are a possession. Not even not just us. But every person on this planet is a likeness bearer of God. They're broken. We're broken. Everybody is, and they have the image of God upon them. That's amazing when you start to think about that. We are God's possession. Render to God what is God's. We need to render ourselves to Him. That's the new man. In a nutshell, that is the new creation. That is the new man. So it's a beautiful thing. He's restoring us into that place. And just for a reminder, what is that place? Rightly having these three things together. You know, the world doesn't have that, that connection, that spiritual connection. It's gone. They try to. They fill it with all kinds of things. They try to make it happen. I had a, <laughs> I had a friend, I might have said this before, but I had a friend in college who had a rock on his um, dresser. He had a rock on his dresser and he would bow down to it. He would, he would actually drop acid and then he would bow down to this rock. And he said, this is my God. And he's trying to make a spiritual connection. I mean, he was totally serious in all of this. I'd go back to my room and I'd just be like, I cannot believe this guy's doing that. You know, what power is there in a rock? You know, he was looking for something. But just for a reminder, this is, this is our imperfect or whatever trinity. It's, the, it's, it's who we are. The body, which is... We experience the world through it, through sight, hearing, taste. You know, we, we feel, we smell. Um, that's, that's part of it. Um, the soul, the imagination, the conscience, the memory, reason, affections, all of these things, you know, the mind is wrapped up in that. All of those things, reason, memory. And then the spirit, which, praise the Lord, is alive in us as a new creation, that we are able to have faith, hope. People of this world don't have hope. Reverence, prayer, worship, and communion with the Holy Spirit. I mean, you can fill in. You can, you can go down through your life and you can take the qualities you think and try to fit them in there. You know, it's, it's hard sometimes to untangle, isn't it? We're complicated. And this is one of the reasons because of all these things jumbled together. But in the new man, that, that becomes righted. It can be right. And so just a beautiful thing. God has, what? renewed us in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. We are renewed in, back into that image that we can express the Lord and we can be rightly expressing him in the world around us. Amazing. It's a beautiful thing that God has done in our hearts and our lives. There, and that is, that, that's totally an inner transformation that happens in our hearts and our lives. Here's some scripture that really support that idea of that that nature of man, that three, that trinity that we are. First Thessalonians 5, 23, it says, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. May you be, may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus. So making reference to that, that, that who we are. This is one of my favorite ones. And we read this a lot of times, but this is, this is so 
um, clarifying to us. Hebrews 4.12, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, the body, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. I am so thankful for this verse and I am so thankful for the word of God because it renews us in knowledge. It renews our knowledge. We wouldn't... I mean, it gives us, what is the knowledge that we are, that we are supposed to have? Sure, we have the Spirit that is, that is working, that we hear in our lives through the circumstances, the situations that we find ourselves in, but also we have the Word of God to guide us and to give us that knowledge. The Spirit of God takes that knowledge and takes it into all kinds of areas of our life. You know, Jesus didn't talk about cell phones. <laughs> He didn't talk about the internet. He didn't talk about movies. He didn't talk about streaming services. He didn't talk about all these things. But the Spirit of God is in us to help us distinguish what's going on there. What has a hold on our lives? I am so thankful for that because I don't know about you guys, but I can have a lot of thoughts go through my mind. And I have no idea where they came from. How do you discern what to do in a situation, a circumstance, in the office, at home, with your wife, with your children? How do you discern what to do? The Word of God is a discerner. Is that just my anger in my heart? Is that my selfish nature? Is that really compassion and love? Should I really do that? I mean, we need that. We need the, the Spirit of God and the Word of God to give us discernment. And especially that. I just, I just love that. That keeps us. The Word of God is a beautiful guard rail that keeps us from going off the deep end in all kinds of different ways. So we need to stop, think about things, right? I mean, I, 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 mean, I, I think we can all relate to child raising in some kind of way, right? I mean, if you just jump off the... <laughs> jump off on things that your kids do, <laughs> you know, you need some discernment, right? I mean, there's all kinds of battles you can fight parenting. But you need discernment to know, where do you go? What's that thought? Should I do this? Should I do that? I know that my dependence on the Lord really grew through my parenting in that time because I was trusting the Lord that they're his kids. He loves them. He's going to give me what I need. So many times I'm sitting up in my, my office, I'm reading the word of God and all of a sudden my heart is convicted by what I said. Have you experienced that? Good. That's the new man. That's the new creation. That is a new way of thinking that God is doing in your heart and your life. And then you step out in faith and you walk in it. And I'm so thankful for the Word of God because it does that in our lives by the power of the Holy Spirit and the living nature of His Word. It is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And we need that so bad um, around us. The image isn't based on any kind of, and the end of, the end of that thought here in Colossians is that um, the, <clears throat> the image is um, renewed or you were, were renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised, uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, nor free, but Christ is all and in all. And this is really important to know about the new nature. There, we're all on the same playing field. When we believe and we trust in the Lord, when we have been reborn, when we have been renewed, when we are walking in the new covenant, and when we have been uh, yeah, saved, basically, there is no distinction. There is no distinction. It's an inner work that God has done and it works out through whatever body, whatever economic status, whatever knowledge that you have, wherever you are, it doesn't matter. God is working through it and I love that. That is so freeing. I really appreciated what, um, what Adam was talking about about judging last week. That was really great because we sit around and we judge one another. We judge people, all that. You know what? In the new covenant, there is no judgment. God is working. He is moving. We trust Him in it. We make all these categories and all of this, th these things, but He doesn't do that. He sees us all. And he loves us and he's working and we are, this is in Christ, right? Not just in the whole world, but in Christ. 
We are one. And we should be working towards that. You know, I, I get it. We, we, we don't all believe the same thing. There are some doctrines that need to be called out. There are people that are doing, you know, things that are not right and that are harmful and hurtful to the body. There's a way to do that. But you know what? When we walk in the new covenant, there is no judgment. We are the same. And I'm so blessed by that. And, you know, the world just doesn't get that. They want to dice things up. You know, they want to make all these divisions. But the new covenant, it goes way beyond all of that. I am so thankful for that. And God wants to live that out through us, you know, as we, as we walk in this world around us. Um, uh, so that image isn't based on categories. It's not anything that man has made up that we see in the world around us. It's an inner transformation that's not based on ethnicity, color, social status, economic status. We're free in Christ. Awesome. Romans 12, 2 says this, that we are not to be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We need to take the things that the world is saying, the weird stuff that is said, all of the, the things where they, they, you know, they dice things up. We need to take that with a grain of salt because we're not conformed to that. We are transformed. By the renewing of our mind, there's a, new, there's a new knowledge there that we have been renewed to and we need to walk in that. So what does the new man look like? Well, the new man looks like Jesus. That's what we read here. I mean, that's what we're seeing here. Look at in verse 12 of Colossians. It says, Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. These qualities here, this is what the new man is all about. This is what you need to be seeing. This is what I need to be seeing in my life. This is what happens when we're transformed. These kinds of things in our relationships, in our workplaces, in our families. Are you, are you seeing these things in your life? Because we need to be seeing that. That is who we are. As His redeemed and His uh, loved, His beloved uh, kids. Um, I forgot one verse though that it was about the image. Um, and I don't know. I really want to share this with you though. <laughs> so I'm going to do that. I'm going to break away from that and I'm going to go to 2 Corinthians 4.16 because I think that this is really important for us. I always saw this verse. I always saw this verse in 2 Corinthians as, as my outward man being the body here. But when I looked at the, the original language and what, what really that word really is, the connotation of that word is alien or banished man. Therefore, we do not lose heart. And we should let that sink into our, our minds here. We don't lose heart. It's really easy, isn't it? To lose heart when we see everything crazy going on in the world around us. It's super easy to lose heart and just think, man, it's all lost. Everything, no, everything is working towards God's perfection and what he has actually said. We can see that. We can trust in that as we look at the big picture from God's perspective. It's all not falling apart, but it's all falling together actually. It's falling into that. Even the stuff that's going on with Israel, I was thinking about this, you know, it's, an, it's a wayward nation. It is. Many, many people do not believe in the Jews, do not believe in the Lord. Is this, is all of this, those birth pangs of that man, that new man that he wants to do? I believe it is, totally, because we see right after Ezekiel 37, or 36, we see Ezekiel 37 and 38, which is a great war, but there is the valley of bones that is raised up, a new spirit. I mean, it's amazing. In Israel, a new nation? I mean, just awesome. No, everything is not falling apart. It's all falling together, actually. Even though our outward man is perishing, and that's the word there, outward man, that means the alien or the banished one. That one is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. And that is awesome. Because we see that old man fading. We should see that. You should be able to see that in your life as a believer. That day that you were saved, that you were born again, you should see a difference from that day to today. That there is a, a renewed 
man in you. There's a new character. There is a new relationship. There is something budding there that God has done and he continues to do. As we let go, as we press that flesh out of the way, we, we, we see that we are renewed um, by into that new relationship with the Lord. Wow, I cannot believe it. I am really, um, I am really uh, late on what I'm doing here. Okay, so um, we'll just go through this real quick. Galatians 5, 22 through 23. Um, basically, it talks about all those things, right? The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. As we're renewed in the Spirit of God, we all of these things come into our lives, all these qualities. And, and you know, take some time to think about this. I don't have time to talk about love and how that, how that should be controlling our life. You know, and not just some foofy love, but real love that has teeth, that has truth in it, right? I mean, that's the way you raise your kids. That's the way God, that's the way we should act. We should be loving in the truth, in the truthful way honest way. Um, and also, um, you know, forgiveness. There's a whole Bible study in and of itself in forgiveness. Though that should be, those should be characteristics that are coming out of our lives. If we're putting on those things in this passage in Colossians, we see three times that, that, that idea of putting on is talked about. And that, and it just equates to like we're putting on a jacket or something like that. Switching the exchange of the old for the new. The exchanging of the old for the new, putting on a new a new jacket. Um, so, and then I just want to encourage you with this as well that in Ephesians chapter four we see that this whole idea of renewal and the new man really is centered right here in the church. Yeah, you have your personal relationship with the Lord, but you know what? Gifting has been given for this very purpose to renew and to support. It's the nutrient. It's what we need to grow in our faith. We need this. Look at what it says there. In Ephesians 4.11 it says, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That's what this is all about. You know, we just don't come here because we have to. It's duty. No, this is what's going on. God is giving us the nutrients. And he's giving everything that we need to step out in faith and to do the things that he has called us to do in the new covenant and in the power of the new nature that he has given to us. So that is such an awesome blessing that he has blessed us with. Um, the fruit there, um, we looked at that. Now walking in the new man. Um, how do we walk in the new man? Well, it's real simple in the scripture here in, in Colossians. It says, um, let the word of Christ, or actually, let the peace of God rule your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, in hymns, in spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. You know, the point here that I, you know, how do we walk in it? Well, we let it happen in our lives. You know, I gave you that uh, picture of my hydroponics tower, right? It's a, there's a seed that I stuck in each one of those little things. Um, and, you know, the seed looked really dead, but there's life in it. There's a way that God has made that to communicate and to figure out what the nutrients are. And if everything is right, it's just going to start to grow. And I guess that's why I really love growing little seeds like that. Because it's amazing what comes out of something that looks so dead, so dry, with the right environment, it grows. I mean, it's amazing. I was looking at the tomato plants that were on there. I'm going, wow, where did these things come from? They were, they're big now, you know? Where did they, the seed was tiny. And yet now they produce something. And you know, our lives are the same way. God produces something as we let go. Um, let the peace of God rule your hearts. You know, what is the opposite of the peace of God? It's anxiousness. What causes it? Control. We, we're, trying, we're worried about stuff. We're trying to control the situation. You know, we're not letting the peace of God rule or govern our hearts. 
but we need to be resting in the Lord. I mean, my example for that was just last night. I mean, all of this stuff that, um, uh, all of these verses and all of these things that I was praying about, they all come together. But man, I get so anxious. How am I going to say that? How am I going to say these things? I was like a mess last night. Thinking about all these scriptures and going, how do these all fit together? I don't know what to do. There's so more, much more that I could actually add. That's why I was talking to you guys about how much God loves you because there's so much packed in here. God loves us. He gives us so much, such a blessing. But I was worried about it, totally worried. How is it going to come out? How will it come out? They're going to judge me for what I say. You know, all the things that we go through, right? But, but the question, how do we walk in that peace? Well, we let go and we realize, no, God is faithful. If he's called us to something, if he's doing something in his life, he's going to provide exactly what we need to be able to do it. That is amazing. So you have those situations in your life just as much as I do. We need to step out in faith on those things and allow God to do what he can do. And then we need to let the word of God dwell in us richly. Not suppressing it, not suppressing the truth of God's word, but walking in it. Let it dwell in us richly. Let it put down stake. Let it put down possession in who we are. Let the word of God be you know, resting in us, dwelling in us richly or completely, abundantly, resting in what he says. It produces knowledge, it produces wisdom. And that whole attitude, it really begins with that humble heart, rightly aligned with an attitude of humility that we are willing. That's what allows that to grow. That's what allows us to let go. That's what allows us to walk in the new person that Jesus has made us to be. And this, this, this is just a reminder to you that Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Look at this one. Romans 1, 12, 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. That's where, that's where God can just spring up. That new nature just springs up like that little plant out of that seed, out of the deadness of your heart, the deadness of your circumstances, the deadness of the situation. God brings life. He continues to do it. Have you seen it in your life? Have you seen that in situations? Remember those times. Don't let the things of life, the the struggles, don't let the things that get you down, don't lose heart. Because that's what God wants to do. He wants to bring newness out of whatever it is. And he does that because of the new covenant and his promises to you and to me. Let's pray. Lord, we're just so thankful for that. We're thankful for the newness of life that we have in you. We're thankful that you've restored us to the knowledge of your presence, your goodness, your love. And we just really thank you, Lord, for it. And we pray. Lord, we pray for the life of your word to come alive in our hearts as we humble ourselves before you, as we are challenged in a fresh way to let go and to let you do what you desire to do, what you can do, what you promise that you will do. And Lord, let us trust you with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, that we would be set apart for you, um, that you would be able to have your way in us. Just thank you for each one that's here this morning. It really is a blessing. And now we go we go to song um, to encourage one another, to admonish one another in him, a psalm, singing, making melody in our hearts, thanking you for all that you have done. Lord, because you are so, so, so good. So Lord, we pray that you would be glorified today. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.